Hello, Mark Sutteth, HurricaneTrack.com, here with your Hurricane Outlook and Discussion special video blog edition showing the NOAA 2013 hurricane season forecast issued on May 23rd, 2013. You may have already heard about this, but I thought I would go over some of the reasons behind the forecast, which is calling for, according to the press release here, as many as 20 named storms. I know you probably can't see some of this text in here. But NOAA calling for a 70% likelihood of 13 to 20 named storms with as many as 11 hurricanes forming out of those. And then as many as four, uh, I'm sorry, three to six, that's more, three to six major hurricanes, category three, four, or five. And that is significant. We're looking at an uptick in activity for this year compared to the long-term average. And some of the reasons why, well, they are looking at a continuation of the atmospheric climate pattern, which includes a strong West African monsoon that is responsible for the ongoing era of high activity for Atlantic hurricanes that began way back now in 1995. Seems like a long time ago, doesn't it? Coming up on almost 20 years since this active era began. Now, what does this mean exactly, that first bullet point? Well, basically, the monsoon pattern over Africa, the African monsoon, produces, when it's active, more tropical waves, more moisture coming out from Africa in the form of these tropical waves, these waves of low pressure in the atmosphere, areas of convergence where the air is already coming together and rising, your low pressure seedlings. This adds moisture to the atmosphere. It adds instability to the atmosphere to some extent. And it's your pre-existing seedling. And the first bullet point emphasizing that there would be more of these seedlings out there this year, a continuation of this pattern that began almost 20 years ago. Then the next bullet point, warmer than average water temperatures in the tropical Atlantic and Caribbean compared to average. Uh, they are running in some areas more than a degree Celsius above the long-term average. Finally, no El Nino expected develop, to develop in the eastern or tropical Pacific this year, and that will suppress the amount of wind shear and not suppress hurricane formation in the Atlantic Basin. I'll explain that further in just a minute. So a quote here from Jerry Bell, Dr. Jerry Bell, the lead seasonal hurricane forecaster from NOAA's Climate Prediction Center. He says this year, oceanic and atmospheric conditions in the Atlantic Basin are expected to produce more and stronger hurricanes. These in, uh, conditions include weaker wind shear, warmer Atlantic waters and conducive wind patterns coming from Africa. Well, here's one slide that's pretty easy to understand. This is the sea surface temperature anomalies map, the departures from average. Here is your cooler than average Pacific. Here's your warmer than average Atlantic. Because this is cooler through here over a very large area, you won't have as much rising motion in the atmosphere and that motion won't spread out and cut across the Atlantic like this creating wind shear across the Atlantic Basin, especially the deep tropics, that won't be there. Conversely, the strong African monsoon pattern producing these tropical waves that come off and march westward over time, that too will be conducive, especially as they pass over this warmer than average water in the tropical Atlantic. Some of these anomalies through here, again, are running a degree Celsius or higher above normal. Not discussed in the NOAA outlook, but other forecasters have talked about this, is the cooler than average water up here in the subtropics. This down here is what we call the deep tropics. Up here is our subtropical Atlantic. And that water being cooler than average means that there won't be a competing factor between warmer water up here and warmer water down here. This is where the warm water belongs and this is where it is. So this is where we would see the most chance of that upward motion pattern the development of tropical waves into depressions, storms, and finally hurricanes. And then depending on steering patterns and other conditions, somebody may get hit and could get hit pretty hard. Now, do not discount tropical depressions and tropical storms, even though they're forecasting as many as 11 hurricanes, even a tropical depression and certainly a tropical storm can cause problems for your location. It just depends, you know, it can dump a lot of rain, you can have a microburst from a tropical thunderstorm in one of those systems. Any number of hazards can affect you locally, and this forecast 
does not address what's going to happen at your particular location. This is a broader brush uh, look at what the hurricane season is shaping up to possibly be with a very active one predicted. All right, so hopefully you understand a little bit about what's going on and why the season is forecast to be as busy as it is. I, uh, again, I'm Mark Suddeth, HurricaneTrack.com, my website. Thank you for uh, watching this video blog. I'll post some of these periodically throughout the season ahead. And remember, always stay prepared. Hurricanes.gov is the National Hurricane Center's official webpage, hurricanes.gov. I'm Mark Suddeth again. I'll talk to you another time.